Uh, in the book of Psalm 50, one verse of scripture, verse 14, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. I've entitled the message tonight simply, I am thankful. For many Americans, Thanksgiving will be different this year than perhaps it's been in any year that we've ever celebrated it. There are many governors and many legislators that are trying to tell us what we can and what we cannot do uh, during this Thanksgiving season. There are some governors that are saying that you can only have your immediate family uh, around your Thanksgiving table tomorrow. There's some saying that only a limited number of family members from the outside can come in. Uh, there's even one state I heard about that says that a neighbor is supposed to uh, tattletale on their other neighbor, uh, that if you've got more people coming to your house than what's allotted, that call the law and they'll come and arrest them during the Thanksgiving season. There are also some governors are saying that for Thanksgiving meal, uh, you must meet outside even with a limited number. And there's others who are saying, well, the wise thing to do is to take your temperature before you come, before you leave, uh, and then to incubate yourself, or, or whatever they call it, I guess, uh, uh, quarantine yourself uh, for 14 days after having uh, been with your family just to be incubated with work, uh, just to be on the safe side. Tomorrow across the fa America, families may or may not uh, enjoy the Thanksgiving meal as they one time have in days gone by with turkey and dressing and stuffing and all the trimmings that are there. Many are gathered around the table tomorrow. I'm sure we'll give thanks for uh, something, perhaps not just for the meal alone, but uh, many will gather to give thanks unto God for all the blessings of life. And yet, sad to say, but probably more people than not will partake of the Thanksgiving meal and not one time give thanks for anything because they love the gifts of God more than the giver of those gifts. And for them, Thanksgiving is nothing more than a good meal and a day or two off from work and the kids to be off from school for a week or so. Thanksgiving is perhaps one of the most unique holidays in America itself. From the time I was old enough to remember Thanksgiving, I always liked it. I always liked that wonderful meal uh, with turkey and dressing and dumplings and cranberry sauce and all the trimmings that went along with it. And one of the reasons is because I liked it so well is because it, the table held a special time for me. It's one of the few times when a lot of the family would get together and enjoy each other. Think back to the past Thanksgivings that you can think about and remember your favorite dish, or maybe it's still your favorite dish. I remember the first time I ever had giblet gravy, my mother-in-law made it. I enjoyed that stuff I found out what was in it. Then I said, I'm not going to eat that anymore, but boy, it was good. Uh, we all like, our, our, I love my mother's uh, dumplings that she used to make. They were fantastic. And yet growing up on a turkey, it was a once, a once a year thing for us. I don't know about you all, but that was a special meat for a special meal on a special day. And that was called Thanksgiving. Or maybe it was just the pumpkin pies that we had with that uh, cranberry sauce. So I, I, it was all good. And then there's another side benefit to Thanksgiving. Uh, we always got to see uncles and aunts and cousins and nephews and nieces and, and grandparents that uh, we hardly get to see but about maybe once or twice a year. Uh, and then there was always the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, uh, which I always endured and never enjoyed and to this day still don't enjoy. Uh, but be that as it may, we had the football games, not to mention the break from school. But hunting season was always open. And I always enjoyed getting out early in the morning on Thanksgiving and go out and kill a few rabbits or a few squirrels and sometime the deer season whatever and you come back home you take a bath and about one o'clock you're ready uh, for that big Thanksgiving feast along the way well and then there's the other side of it but today it's different today we still have the food and we still have the parades and we still have the football and we still have the time off from school but over the past few decades it seems to me like that Thanksgiving has become just a strategic starting point for the start of Christmas rather than just being a time of celebration. Thanksgiving Day has become a day where Black Friday seems to rule it. Taking the place of Thanksgiving, we usually do an awful, an awful lot of com complaining about how that Christmas has been so stereotyped and how Christmas has become so commercialized, but in reality have we not basically done the same thing uh, when it comes to Thanksgiving itself. We gather for a great feast. We sit in the Lazy Boy uh, and we burp it off and watch the football game. We get up, we eat another turkey sandwich and go back down and sit in the Lazy Boy to watch football or off to the mall uh, to go shopping. But historically, Thanksgiving has never really been known as a religious holiday, but yet perhaps maybe it should uh, because it is a time of thanksgiving. 
That's what it applies. President George Washington issued the first national wide proclamation on November the 26th of 1789 was set aside, and I quote, as a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many uh, and uh, single favors of Almighty God, end of quote. This tradition continued through the years, and each state saw their own time as to when they would acknowledge a time of national thanksgiving. By the early 1800s, most states were using uh, the last Thursday of the month of November uh, to set aside as a national day to thank the Almighty God for His provisions upon each of us and upon the countries. And then in Abraham Lincoln, he was the first national wide setting for it uh, in 1863. He was influenced by Sarah Hale. Uh, she was the woman that wrote uh, 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 Mary Had a Little Lamb. And for about 40 some years, she was in the political arena trying to get somebody to say, let's make Thanksgiving a national holiday to give thanks and praise unto our God. Lincoln used that day uh, to bring about a sense of unity between the North and the South because of the Civil War. He wanted to try to bring it together, but that never did come into fruition until the Reconstruction days. Having said that, listen to President Abraham Lincoln's proclamation. A bit lengthy, but I think well deserved to listen to. And I quote, The year that's drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To those bounties which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Others have been added which are of extraordinary by nature that they cannot fail to penetrate uh, and soften the heart which is habitually insensible to over watchful providence of the Almighty God. End of quote. He goes on to talk about the, the casualties of the Civil War, but also the blessings that God had bestowed upon our nation during those times. And then he circled back to the theme about God and his watchful eye, and then he begins, and I quote, No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who while dealing with us in anger for our sins, had nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that we should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and with one voice by a whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in heaven. And I recommend to them that while offering up the aspirations justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessing, they do also with humble penance of our national uh, perverseness and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lament, uh, lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged and firmly implore the interposition of Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of our nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with divine purposes, to fulfill enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union, end of quote. Lord, we need that again today. Beautiful words, powerful words from a great man and from a great leader. Compare those words with what Washington himself said of how that we ought to bring our citizens back to God and have a national day of blessing uh, to our Heavenly Father. You've heard me say this before, but somebody said we should have one day a year set aside for grumbling and the other 364 days a year ought to be a time of praise and thanksgiving to God. Amen. But no, it's not that way at all. Brothers and sisters, how close to this passage of Scripture were Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and all the other Thanksgiving Scriptures that you find in the entirety of God's Word? Think with me. Think about the name Thanksgiving. What does that mean to you? Thanksgiving. Uh, the English language is funny to begin with, I think. But you ever stop to think about it, you go, thank you. What does that mean, thank you? Is that kind of a weird terminology as you think about thank you? Thank you. What are the words thanksgiving conjure in your mind? With that being said, thanksgiving, what does it name? What's it actually mean? Let's begin to break it down. Thanks and giving. Now you get better sense. Thanks and giving. Thanks, according to the dictionary, is a kindly or grateful thoughts and expression of gratitude. But listen to the other definition. Thanks is an 
attitude of expression of thankfulness. There's that pesky word, attitude. Thanks is an attitude of expression of thankfulness. Thanks is a word that we use often. Someone holds the door open for you, thank you. Uh, you uh, sneeze and somebody says, uh, God bless you, and you go, thanks. These are words that we often say. We use it over and over. That's both uh, built off the first definition. We really want to say to someone, we want to thank them wholeheartedly, thank you. Not just thanks, but thank you. Now this is more than just saying a word. It's an attitude that we're supposed to have. Thanks is more than just a word. It's an attitude that we ought to have. In Psalm 100 in verse 4, it tells us to be thankful to him and bless his name. It's more than just saying thanks. It's more than just being thankful. It's an attitude of thankfulness, a heart full of gratitude, a heart full of right attitude, a heart full of thankfulness. And that's where the second part of Thanksgiving comes in. Listen to the definition of this word. To present voluntarily and without expecting compensation. To express voluntarily and not expecting anything in return. So thanksgiving is an attitude of bestowing something on someone without expecting anything monetary or anything given back to us in return. The word give is a verb. And the word donates action and requires an action on our part. The term give thanks is mentioned 39 times in the Word of God. To me, he's trying to say have an attitude of developing thanks for everything that we have. An attitude of thanksgiving for everything that we have. And give thanks without expecting anything back in return. 39 times in the King James. And the vast majority of those instances deal with giving thanks unto our God. May I say this? As we give thanks regardless of our feelings, God will give us joy regardless of our circumstances. If we can learn to give thanks unto God regardless of our feelings, He will give us joy regardless of of our circumstances. Thankfulness opens up our heart to his presence and thankfulness opens up our minds to his thoughts. If we can learn to express thanks unto our God just because of who he is. And church, if you're like me, if my day goes wrong, the last thing I want to do is say thank you. Are we not made of the same stuff here? I think it's why it's important to get along with God and humble ourselves before Him and begin to thank Him and praise Him for who He is, for what He's done for us, for what He's going to do for us, and what He's doing for us even now. 2 Samuel twenty-two fifty. 50, Therefore will I give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. In uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 8, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Paul said in Colossians 1, 3, We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. In Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. He didn't say for everything, give thanks. He said in everything, give thanks. With that being said, let's put the two words together. Thanksgiving. We're thankful. We have an attitude of thankfulness. And we're giving that thanks away. Not expecting to be anything in return. And not expecting to be recognized for it. Thanksgiving. Let me say it again. It basically means we are thankful. We have an attitude of thankfulness. We're giving that thanks away. Not expecting it to be paid for or even recognized as we offer it to somebody else. God enjoys our being thankful to him. And I believe we're more like him as we express thankfulness to other people. It's easy to grumble. But we can do a whole lot more by being thankful, not just saying the word, but with an attitude that expresses what we're saying. You hate that somebody do something and go, thank you. I just assumed they kept their mouth shut. You can say the right thing in the wrong attitude. But if the attitude is right, we can say the right thing in the right way. 
Praise God. It's time of reflection and remembrance of the blessings of God and the blessings of life. Hopefully we'll all enjoy time with our family tomorrow, with our friends, with a good meal, and with our God. Thanksgiving is not a religious holiday per se, as I said a moment ago, perhaps it should be, but it is an opportunity. I said Thanksgiving is an opportunity, a day that God's given opportunity for us to show the world where our focus really is. Friends, <laughs> Let's be nice to people. Let's show thankfulness to God by being nice to the people that he loves. Are you always nice to people? I'm not. And you know who we're usually the raunchiest toward? The ones that are closest to us. Are we not? Y'all looking at me like a cow looking at a brand new gate. Can we just sometimes be a little flippant with the ones we love in our own household? We can give our best to everybody else. But we go home and I'm fed up with it, friend. Don't, don't, I got one nerve and you're dancing all around it. You know what I'm talking about? But let's develop that thankful attitude all the days of our life. It's a time of reflection and remembrance the blessings of God. Thanksgiving, as I say, we don't want to be sober and, and dressed in the Puritan black during this time. But we, don't, we do want to have an attitude of thankfulness and a willingness to give our thanks to God who made the feast, who gave us our family, who gave us our friends, and the blessings that we can thank Him for all throughout the year. We can thank Him for this one special day called Thanksgiving. Here's the challenge. Carrying this attitude Friday and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, all of next week as well. Another wise man by the name of Robert Casper Lintner said, Thanksgiving was never meant to be shut up in a single day. President Woodrow Wilson said, A nation which does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today, nor what it's trying to do. We're not trying to do the futile thing if we do not know where we've come from or what we have been about. In the quote, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of our political unrest, in the midst of all the mayhem within our streets, in the midst of all the sickness in our families, of all the setback in our families, in the midst of, of the deaths that we've experienced, we still have much in which to be thankful. Yes. Much to be thankful. From the simple things to the most exotic. From running water in the home. Some of you may remember running water. We had to run out of the lake and get it. Indoor plumbing. Well, that's no big deal. It was for some of us. I remember the outhouses. Anybody else? And we had to use them. No boy back in the mountains one time. I hate to say this. My wife will get me, I know. He visited his grandfather. It was a two-seater outhouse. You ever seen? I never understood a two-seater. I had a two-seater outhouse. And he goes in. You had a three-seater. That would be interesting. He had a two-seater outhouse. And the guy said... Grandpa, how do you use this thing? He said, son, I know you're from the city, but you can figure that out. About 10 minutes later, he walked out of there soaking wet from here down. He'd put one leg in that hole and one leg in that one. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't fix stupid, can you? <laughs> we had running water in our homes. Electricity. Hit the switch and here's electricity. Amen. Thank God for it. And you ever take for granted ice? Think about that. You go to the refrigerator and there's ice to put in your drink and you got a drink to put it in. We have an ample supply of food on the inside of our pantries. Thank God we've got a pantry. There's a roof over our head. Whether you live in a gym, Walter, a home, or a condo, or a house, thank God you've got a roof over your head. And it's usually air conditioned for the summer and heat for the winter. Thank God there's shoes on the feet, clothes on your back. You have a nice car to ride down the road or maybe two cars. You have a job or at least some way to have some type of income coming within your house. Clothes in your closet. Material blessings, but also the tremendous spiritual blessings that God has given. Our sins have been removed. We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Our names have been written down in the Lamb's book of life. We serve a God who loves us. A God who's promised to meet all of our needs. A God who prays for us. And one who's gone away to prepare a place for us. And one who's promised to come and get us and take, him, take us unto himself.
John the Revelator said, Where, Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him and lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your help they exist and they were created. That's quite a reaction to thanks, isn't it? Quite a reaction to the word thanks. Amen. It's amazing when you and I get along with God and just begin to thank Him for who He is, the things He will show us that He's done for us. Friend, it's so easy to be discouraged today. I have to fight depression. I don't know if you do, but I fight depression from time to time. I'm stressed like everybody else. I've got aches in my body. I didn't know I had places to ache. You're getting older and things happen. A lot to discourage you. But if we can just be still every day of our life and get along with God, there'll be something to which we can develop an attitude of thanksgiving. Your world may be bad tonight, you think. That black cloud may be over your head tonight thick. And the thunder you may hear and the lightning you're afraid is going to zap you. But there's somebody worse off than what you are tonight. I can't remember the man's name, but somebody may help me, but about four years or five years before we moved up here from the old building, there was a man that started attending the church. He got saved. And he was moving a tractor out of his truck, uh, a mower, and it fell over on him and paralyzed him from here down. I cannot remember his name. I visited him. Huh? Bruce. Bruce? Bruce? I think that was it. Yeah, that's it. You remember. I've, Randy and I have visited him many, many times in the hospital, the nursing homes. He was paralyzed from here down. They finally put something in his mouth to where he could pucker up and turn the TV on. He couldn't move his head. He could move his eyes and pucker him out. That was it. No movement at all. He was at the VA hospital. And they brought a machine in over his bed, a conveyor, a hoist, and put it down, wrapped it around him, picked him up, and he smiled the whole time. They put him in a chair, lay him down, and he's gone. They take him to rehab. He comes back and he says, put him into bed the same way. He said, Pastor, you wouldn't believe the mess some of these people are in around here. I don't know how they survive. I mean, what? His attitude was phenomenal. I never one time heard him complain. He always had praise on his lips and thankfulness to God for something. And the man could do nothing for himself but take that stick and turn on the TV and turn it off. Couldn't move his head, couldn't eat, couldn't, couldn't do nothing. And I said, dear God, forgive me when I murmur and I complain with the things that you've given unto me. The more the blessing, the more the responsibility I believe we have to give praise and adoration back to our God. The man finally died with a smile on his face. But God had delivered Bruce from a lifestyle and never will forget. And he was, he, he was more of a man without any of his body functions than he ever was with all of them. But he had, a, he had a triumphal spirit on the inside that knew how to be thankful unto God. As we look at this day and we look at the world turned upside down, we should double our efforts to bring the world back into a better focus. One person at a time, we can let them know that we're thankful. In closing, I'm thankful for Jesus tonight. Where would you and I be tonight if it were not for the mercy, the grace, the love, and the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord? I'm thankful for my family tonight. I'm grateful that God has so blessed me. I still have a mother and a father. I still have a mother-in-law and a father-in-law. I still have sisters. I still have a son and a daughter and their families. And I still have the delight of my life, eyes, and that's my wife. I thought today as I was praying for, I thought, God, of all the people in the world that's loved me, I thank God for a wife that stuck with me through thick and thin, being willing to work outside the home two and three jobs so I could take a small church and pastor it. Anytime we've ever made a move from a nice furnished house to didn't know where we're going, 
Not one time did she complain or say, we can't go. She said, let's obey the Lord. Even when I was praying and fasting about coming here with 15, 18 people, I said, honey, I believe the Lord's leading us to a new life. Well, you better go. Not one negative thing to say. I know a lot of women that's ruined a lot of pastors. And I know a lot of women, they would keep her before they'd keep the pastor <laughs> in some of the churches. I'm thankful for my friends. A friend is somebody you can call any day, any time of the hour, and they'll be there for you. Not to take from you, but to give to you. And I am so thankful for my church family. I thank God for New Life Assembly, for every man, woman, boy, and girl that comes to this church and all that you bring to the table. I do not take you for granted, do not take your ministry for granted, your talent for granted, nor you for granted. I thank God for every one of you that come to this church. I'm thankful for my pastor tonight. I just got off the phone with my 92-year-old pastor right before the service this evening. And there's been a time I've ever talked with him in the 40-some years, 50-some years almost. I get 40-some years I've known him. Never been one time to my knowledge I've not talked to that man. I've not learned something. I can't think of a time I've not learned something. If it's just another new joke, there's something I've learned from him. I thank God from a pastor who lived it, who preached it, who teach, taught it, and who let God confirm it. And finally tonight, not in any given order, I'm thankful for America. I've traveled the globe and I've been to a lot of countries, a lot of different people groups. You've heard me say it before, there's a lot of things wrong with America, but brothers and sisters, there's a lot right with it tonight. I thank God for America. It's the only country that I know we have to build walls to keep people out. We're still the breadbasket of the world, and we still have decent people. We still have decent people. And we still have freedoms and we still have liberties that other nations would die for. I thank God for America. Music